the strong conquering warrior of Israel, captivated by the allure of a beautiful woman. So who's the stronger? How this Barry feels a 10 minute toward day number one of the Torah portion Kitetse. Let's continue reading in Deuteronomy, Devarim chapter number 21. And let's begin with verse number 10. When you go out to fight against your enemies, and Yahweh your Elohim shall give them into your hand, and you shall take them captive, and shall see among the captives a woman fair of form, and shall delight in her, and take her for your wife, and you shall bring her home to your house, and she shall shave her head, and trim her nails, and put aside the mantle of her captivity, and shall dwell in your house, and mourn her father and her mother a month of days, and after that you shall go into her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. What a scenario. We talked about this many times before, but it's always very interesting to come back to this particular section. And there's something important, I think, that we can find for ourselves here. The understanding is that Israel, when it enters into the land, that they are to make war against all of the Canaanitish nations, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Hevites, and all of those other ites, if you will. And they are to not spare man, woman, or child. They are to totally eradicate these peoples. Now, one might say that's not very loving and that's not very merciful, for the mighty one that we serve, it just seems to go against his presented character. But let's also understand that these are people who are completely given over to idolatry. They have worshipped demons so much that to some degree they are mutated and infested, if you will. These are people who have no desire, no uh, inkling whatsoever to acknowledge the mighty one of Israel, Yahweh our Elohim. They are always going to be a thorn in Israel's side. Yah understands their very nature and says, you can make no peace with these nations, no league, no treaty, take no captives, spare nothing, wipe them out. Or if you allow them to remain in the land, they will seduce you, turn you, and cause you to run from your allegiance to me. So choose and battle them completely. So when we are reading here about a woman that is permitted to be taken as a captive, she is not a Canaanitish woman. Well, then who might she be? Who else is Israel to make war with? Two things to consider. One is that Israel is to be a light of guidance to the going to the nations we find earlier in the book of Devarim, Deuteronomy, chapter number four, verse number uh, six and seven says, And you shall guard and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding before the eyes of the peoples who hear all these laws, and they shall say, he's talking about the other nations watching Israel, only a wise and understanding people is this great nation. For what great nation is there which has Elohim so near to it as Yahweh our Elohim is to us whenever we call on him? And what great nation is there that has such laws and righteous right rulings like all this Torah which I set before you this day? Moshe is informing the people that they are going to be a light of guidance to the other nations who are going to look on with admiration toward them and say, this is a more ideal society. This is a better way to live. They have an Elohim who is not appeased with offerings and bloodshed, but rather he is in covenant relationship with them, and he is near to them. All they need to do is call on him, and he will answer them, not like these stone idols that we serve. So, If a nation has such an attitude toward Israel, then they can be a peaceable neighbor, they can get along, and they can be mutually beneficial. The other option is that Israel would then have to become a light of exposure. 
And that is that there would be nations that would look on them and seek to conquer them, wanting this valuable, uh, overabundant land for themselves, supposing that their gods are superior to Yahweh. Therefore, they will look on with jealousy, with greed, with malice and violence toward Israel, and they would choose rather to attack what's going on. Well, the light of Israel is not guiding them, but exposing them and their true nature, revealing who it is that they really are at their core as they would attack then Israel would defend itself, and as has been historically the case, oftentimes when nations align themselves to come and attack Israel, Israel not only defends themselves uh, successfully, but conquers more territory. You want to attack us? Fine, we'll take your land. There, At the time of this recording, there is the fomenting of war in the northern borders of Israel. There's consistent uh, threats from the southwest down in the Gaza area. Um, So keep on picking, keep on striving, keep on threatening war, and Israel will just simply take your land. However, there's a problem. Of course, we understand in modern times that the nations do not look on Israel favorably, and at every opportunity they will seek to chasten Israel and demand land for peace, etc. So whenever Israel has conquered and overcome, oftentimes they end up seceding the land back in order to, um, uh, to make peace with the nations of the earth. Another story. So we have a warrior then who goes to fight against a nation that has chosen to attack Israel, and out of that, there may be taken captives. These are not Canaanitish lands. These are neighboring countries or um, distant countries that have chosen to travel to attack Israel and take their land. So this is a woman then who is not of Hebrew culture, Hebrew language. Uh, In ancient times, it's my understanding, when warfare was taking place, that... uh, Those that were being attacked, in this case, this woman's people and her country, Israel has come to defend and is taking land, that they would dress themselves in an alluring fashion in order, if they are taken captive, that they will be desired to be captives instead of being slaughtered. This was their only chance of survival. So this woman has presented herself perhaps as such. A Israeli warrior has looked at her and thought, wow. Now, why there were not enough beautiful women in Israel to to be uh, sufficient for him, I don't know. But as is in this case, this woman has caught his eye and his attention. In warfare, there is the uh, fight or f- flight feed or mate mindset. It is instinctive. You you don't rationally draw out a long process for decision making. You're living on the edge. You're living in impulses. You're living by instinct. Seeing the woman, Yah says, curb your instincts. Calm yourself and let's think this out. You may have her, but only through a process. Now, We're not about going and conquering nations in our time, at least we're not supposed to be. So what is this referring to? This may refer to those who are antagonistic toward Israel, toward Torah, toward the walk that you and I are on at present. It may be then that as we relate with them, as we come in contact with them, then we realize Yah has a desire for them. Yah yearns for them to come to a right understanding, to a better, clearer understanding of his word. If we will curb our natural instincts against warring and fussing and fighting with them, it may be that we can help them through the process of finding Messiah, finding him correctly, and become a part of the expanded bride of Mashiach, 
which will include many more peoples than we might imagine. Consider these things, pray on them, and pray on them, excuse me, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Then shalom. Thank you.